would, sorry to inform you, we're praying for you and we hope your ministry is growing, but we just built a new wing on our church and we're going to have to cut back. And so, I, did you realize today that the average missionary taken out, that out of 10 missionaries that surrender to go to the mission field, eight of them will quit before they ever get to the mission field? Two missionaries that will make it to the field. Those two missionaries will last a four-year term or less. <coughs> oh, well, God must not have called them. You go try it. That's right. You dive in on it for a little while. You go. When we bought that first piece of property over on Moorfield Road, right beside of my brother Tommy and the Garcia family's land, we bought that and I pulled that old bus out in there. We had no water. We had no electric. We had nothing. There's a septic tank over there now that's seven foot deep, seven foot wide, and 12 foot long that myself and my two little girls dug with a pick and shovel. Are you listening to me? Nobody came along and said, how you doing, brother? Let me help you. Because see, my burden is not your burden. We don't care anymore. We'll put our little bit of money in the church and we'll walk out of here and nine out of ten people don't even return to their own church on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. That's good. There's things more important. That's right. Well, preacher, I'm tired. Like you're the only person in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now, come on, we're getting down to the nitty gritty this morning, aren't we? Amen, brother. Huh? How are we going to reach the world if we're more concerned about ourselves than we are about the men and women that God has called? That's right. I met a young man here some time ago. He, he graduated college with me. Then he went to Philadelphia to build a church. An area where there was no Baptist church and he went there to build a church. And after he got a little building and got a nucleus of people together, he called all of them and said, will you come and help me celebrate it? We're going out and knock on doors and win souls to build this church. And I scraped together enough money to get to Philadelphia to help the brother. And when I got up there, Brother Mike Schweitzer, and when I got there, you know how many other pastors and how many other church members came? No. Not one. Breathe. Not one. And that brother stood alone in Philadelphia. You know what he ended up doing? He ended up closing up his suitcase and leaving. Wow. He got so discouraged and so defeated. Do you have any idea how discouraged and how defeated that your missionaries get? My wife and two little girls and myself sat over on Moorfield Road. We sat over there with no money and no food. I had to walk to the post office. I, I could get our mail. Because we had nothing. And day after day we struggled to try to keep building in the work and to build a church. And to try to build a ministry. And churches everywhere said, well, Brother McLean, we're praying for you. And by the way, we've got to cut your support. Got a, several questionnaires, new pastors coming in. Doctrinal questionnaires. Doctrinal questionnaires. Dear brother, we're making an update on our mission board and our missionaries and we want to see where you stand doctrinally. Does your wife wear slacks? Yep. Do, do you wear wire rim glasses? Do you have a TV? Doctrinal. Are you listening to me? Do I have your attention? Doctrinal statements. And I turned over on the back and I said, it ain't none of your business what my wife wears. And yes, I have a TV and I've got a radio too. Both of them's got knobs. And I wrote preach on the bottom of it about 50 times and drew a line and said, if that's the kind of missionary you want, sign here and keep supporting me. Hmm. <laughs> that's good preach. Yeah. Amen, brother. Huh? Missionaries get that. Did you realize that out of a four-year term, that a missionary will lose 10% of his support. Yes. Ten. Now we're going to take furlough, right? Are you listening to me? Being a part team. We're going to take a furlough. Now we take vacations when we work our job, don't we? Yep. We take a vacation. Missionaries are supposed to have a furlough. It's supposed to be a vacation. 
but he's going to spend the next year dragging his family from church to church to church trying to keep his support and then trying to raise enough to stay on the feet. Sleeping in, now I used to sleep in real mission prophet houses. Sunday school room in the basement where they put a couch in or put a, a, a bunk bed down there. And you went down the hall to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. And now, call me for a revival and stick me in one of those rooms. I ain't a going, honey. I don't, I'm not, call me prideful or whatever. You listening to me? Where these missionaries have to stay. What they have to do. Did you realize that a missionary in a four-year term will spend in excess of $100,000 traveling, trying to raise $2,000 to stay on the field. He will burn up, completely destroy, and wear out an average of two automobiles in this period of time. It's going to take him from five to eight years now to raise his support. Why? Because we don't want to be a partaker with him. We're not partakers of his affliction. We don't care. Notice what Paul said. Paul said, when I was there, I stood by myself. But Onesimus often refreshed me. Wonder how he was refreshed. Wonder what happened to refresh him. I can tell you a little. Can I tell you a little incident about Brother McLean? This won't take but a second. I'm a, I'm a junk food eater. Can't help it. I think that's the four food groups. <laughs> Dr. Pepper and chocolate. Huh? Woo! I love it. <laughs> Nothing better of a morning and more nutritious than a good cup of coffee and a chocolate bear claw. Ooh, oh. I believe that Hershey Kisses with almonds in them is going to be in heaven. <laughs> yeah. I believe that when we get there, we're going to have mounds and mounds of them, and they're going to have the wrappers off of them so we don't have hey. to waste them. <laughs> And I'm preaching at a church in Illinois and I made mention to somebody that I love Hershey Kisses with almonds in. We got back here to the valley. We brought all the money that I'd raised and put it in paying for that land and trying to build a building. Every building that you see over there is something we tore down. The first building that put up on that 12 acres to build this ministry was an old Catholic chapel that we preached revival meeting for two weeks in Chicago, Illinois, tore that old Catholic chapel down, piled it on top of that old Greyhound bus, and hauled her back down to Mission, Texas to build the first building that we had. And I got here and I spent all my money and I was broke and discouraged. And we had eaten chicken. I won't forget, chicken was nine cents a pound. This was in 1986. Nine cents a pound. We had fried chicken. We had stewed chicken. We had boiled chicken. We had the barbecue chicken. We had chicken so much. So one day I said to my wife, I said, we can't eat any more chicken. She said, that's all we can afford. I said, look at our daughters. They were coming across the yard scratching and a pecking at the ground. <laughs> Went to bed one night and I said, I've had it, Rhonda. I've had it. We're going home. I'm calling my parents and I'm getting them to send me enough money to get us fueled and we're going home. I've had it. I can't take it anymore. My daughters are wearing rags and we don't have food to eat. I've had it. I'm going home. And I walked from there to the mission post office and opened the, the post office box. And there was a little brown box in there addressed to me. And I opened that box and there was a little one pound package of Hershey Kisses. 
and ten dollars and a little note that was torn off the cover of an envelope. And it said, Preacher, thinking about you. Hey, hey, I Man, Praise God. God. Come on, brother. Come on. Keep up the good work. We're proud of you. Take this $10 to take your daughters to McDonald's. It's all I had in my pocket. And enjoy the Hershey Kisses. P.S. Just keep getting fat. <laughs> And I took those Hershey kisses and shouted all the way back to the house that somebody remembered enough that they wanted to refresh me, not with a thousand dollars, not with a million dollars, but something as simple as a pack of Hershey kisses. Amen. Are you there this morning? Yes, sir. He often refreshed me. Then notice what he did with Brother Paul. The Bible said, Paul said, in he, when he was in Rome, he sought me out. Are you there? That means he went on his way to Walmart, honey, and stumbled up and said, by the way, have you seen Paul? He sought him out. He went looking to make sure that his missionary was all right. He went searching to find him and make sure that he had what he needed and that he was taken care of and make sure he was all right. But in today's society, we hear a rumor about our missionary and we say, I knew he wasn't going to make it anyway. Huh? We ought to seek them out, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Seek them out. What do they need? What do they need? How are they? How are their families? What's going on with their family? Do they need anything? Are they going to make it? Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to be more than just a supporter. Hey. We've got to be a friend. We've got to be there. Well, every time I hear a missionary letter, he's always asking for money. I, I just can't understand. You know what our theory is? If we can keep that missionary poor, we're doing good. Mm. No. Sitting in my garage is a Harley Davidson motorcycle. I ride it. Most of my visitation, most of my areas, I ride it for two reasons. Number one is fuel mileage, and number two is because I like it. <laughs> I got a letter the other day from a guy and he said, I just wondered how you were doing and if you were still doing mission work and how's that Harley? And I wrote him back and I said, no, nah, I'm not doing anything, just riding my Harley and enjoying it. The Bible says answer a fool according to his fault. Mm. Huh? The whole bottom line is, it's all right if I walk. It's all right if I pedal a bicycle. It's all right if you drive a new Lincoln, a new Cadillac, or, or a new Jaguar, but not your missionary. Great. Huh? Amen. Good. That's hard, isn't it? That's hard preaching. I know I'll be out of here in a little bit and you'll get back to some good preaching. <laughs> <laughs> but being the here, I hate for you to leave with your wagon half loaded. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, missions are hurting. Mm. Missions are in trouble. Across the land, missions are in trouble. Why? Because people are not concerned about their mission. I want to ask you, are you planning on getting concerned? Amen. Are you planning on being a friend? Well, you know what? That missionary, I saw him the other day, and he was driving a new suburban. And, not only is he driving a new suburban, but every time he comes to church, he's asking for money. Well, your drop doctor drives a new Lincoln, and he asks for money, but you keep going back. Mm. Huh? And you don't complain about that. That's right. Are you listening to me? That missionary shouldn't have to live like a second-hand citizen. Amen. He shouldn't have to live in poverty. Amen. But he ought to be taken as well care of as we take care of ourselves. Amen. Huh? Are you there? Mm. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to carry the light to a lost and dying world or are you going to sit back and let your missionaries go lacking, go without? The decision is up to you to smoke of what you're going to do.